guys yet. Back here with Duelist of the Roses uh, ranking challenge. Uh, recording this. Basically, all I did was just pause the last episode. I don't know what it's at on time, and I just started this episode right away. So, anyway, we're here in the middle of dueling uh, Panic. So, he's down to 2960. What a weird number of life points. And we're still at our full 4000. So, Seeking Attack. Oh, another infinite dismissal. Not bad, not bad. Um, what do we got in our hand here? Limiter removal. Wow, and I've got I've got the combo. Basically, I've got limiter removal and these. Not bad, I guess. Um, the only thing is, I've got a lot of seats rain out right now, so I guess I do have two machines out though. So there's there's that, I guess. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll move. Uh, Maybe I'll move Bugroth, like, right here. Uh, because his cards are weak in Forest, so... Might be worth a shot, and I've got a power-up for it, too, so... Okay. Yeah, he's... He's just moving right there, so... Okay. Oh, Lord of Zemaya, huh? Oh, he used the, uh... Same type friendly boost to beat you, Furious Seeking. Sorry about that. Sorry, my man. Not bad. Spirit Bomb. Kamehameha. Man. Yeah, he, he basically just, with his one hand, he charged that sucker up and fired it. Not bad. I think we saw that thing attack before, and I was just like, wow, that's actually pretty cool. From a pretty unheard of monster. I don't think this card was released in Legend of Blue Eyes, but it's basically got Legend LOB stats, you know, at 13 and like a thousand. Let's see. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't think this was released in LOB, but uh, it's interesting. Um, Amoeba. Well, now I kind of don't want to move here because, you know, obviously we would get direct attacks. So. Um, I could also play Amphibious Bugroth now, though, since I drew this Aqua. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't sound too bad. Um, we got plenty of water over here. So, you know what? Yeah. Fusion Ha. Alright. Amphibious Bugroth. There we go. And yeah, I'm in the range of same type friendly, so I'm gonna lose a little power, but, uh,. I mean, 1350 ain't too bad. Show them amphibious bug growth. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, man. <laughs> the double threat. Heck, yeah. The little machine gun, and then boom, the power blast. I love it. Good job, amphibious bug growth. Systems clear. Beep, beep, beep. Life forms extinguished. Beep, beep. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's move slide over here and end the turn. The only reason I'm doing that is because this guy plays really weird sometimes, and he may just go up and summon like. Yeah, I didn't want him to do anything too crazy there, but you know. Yeah, yeah, and he did go up, so. Probably a good decision on my part. Oh, Castle of Dark Illusions. I wouldn't mind winning this card from you, but it uh, looks like we're about to win here. So, um, I guess I'll see. Yeah. Um, let's just give something here some experience, because it looks like we win. So, um, who's got the highest rank? I think Aki Hiran. It's you, my man. So, there you go. Uh, yeah, free direct attack. Alright. And that didn't last too long, you know, for an episode, so... <laughs> maybe I'll take this guy on again, you know. Some duels against him can go pretty quick, so... Yeah, because that was only, like, what, like, uh, two or three minutes? And... Okay, we'll duel him one more time. Again, we'll call it good. All right, a lot of traps here. Um, okay, infinite 
this missile. I think I already have plenty of that. But there are two in the slots, so I will go for a three in a row. Um, okay, okay, okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I'll aim for the one by Tears of the Mermaid. That way, if I miss, we get Tears of the Mermaid. Oh, yes! Three in a row! What do we get? What do we get? What do we get? Jiraiguno! Hmm. Interesting card. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, you may have wondered... Um, yeah, this is one of the signature, like, old-school cards. You may have been wondering, like, why doesn't Weevil have this card? Uh, anyway, let's take a quick look before we do a panic again. Yeah, pretty good card, honestly. And I'm kind of glad we got it in a three in a row, to be honest. Yeah, so check this out. Jirai Gumo, 2200 attack, 100 defense. Does it have the coin flip effect in this game where it howls your life points? No. So it has two effects. Movement decreases life points by 100 for each space moved. Kind of a weird effect, and really, like, it makes that paying whole life points thing a joke because, you know, only 100 for each movement? That's not a problem in this game. There are plenty of cards that can boost your life points, you know, like uh, Soul of the Pure. Anyway, the attack effect, uh, this is kind of like Happy Lover or some cards like that you may have ran into. Uh, yeah, cancels all power increases or decreases of an enemy monster in battle. Pretty good, so it basically forces them to their base attack. Does not cancel bonus effects such as terrain or leader ability. So basically, like, my point is, Dragumo is a really good card, and the best thing you can do with this thing is, you know, especially if you have it on Forest, 2700 will we'll give it with the terrain, and then if you give it even one power up, it's at 3200. And with its attack effect, since it reduces the opponent, you know, to their base stats, like, how are they gonna out this card? Pretty hard to do, honestly, because even, like, like I said, the example I just came up with, Jirai would have 3200. Even Blue Eyes, with its base stats, only has 3,000, so... Kind of a hard monster to out, not gonna lie. Um, pretty good combo, you know. If you happen to win it three in a row, I definitely recommend using it. Uh, don't worry about the hunter, you know, life points thing. Um, so, yeah, well, I guess just, you know, watch your life points if they're getting really low, you know, that's, you know. But, uh, yeah. Pretty darn good card. And like I said, you may be wondering, why doesn't Weevil have that card? Um, I mean, to be quite honest, I don't know. You know, number one, maybe he does have it, and I just, you know, you know I just never knew. But number two, I think they thought, you know, especially with Weevil so early in the game, I think they thought it was probably a little too overpowered, you know, to give, you know, the first guy in the game. Did we will use Dragumo in the anime? Uh, did he? I honestly don't remember. But you know, he is the uh, you know resident uh, bug duelist. So um, yeah. Wow, we're getting a weird combination of cards in this one. Um, you know what? Let's send Sparks up this way. Oh man! <laughs> All right, and we'll end the chat. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think they just thought, you know, Dragomo, just a teensy, weensy, you know, overpowered for, uh, for the first duel in the game. You know? Ah, Infinite Dismissal, he seems to like that. But hey, I don't mind, you know, we just got a three in a row off of that, so. Okay, Kageningen number one. Oh, Invisible Wire. Well, you know what? Kageningen, Kageningen, I appreciate it. You know, better for that to happen than, uh, you know, Aqua Dragon to get hit by that, right? Or Kyrushin. Speaking of Kyrushin, we can actually spread some water right now. So I think I'll move Kageningen right here. Yeah. And then I'll move forward, and we will fusion Shokan with a fish and a dragon. Yeah, now you guys can see why I want more dragons, obviously. More dragons, more fish, more Kyrishin. I actually think we have plenty of fish. We have like we have like four fish, which honestly is enough, you know. Uh, but yeah, there we go. And he's one hit away, one Kyrishin attack away from victory. The face down card. Huh? All right, all right. Well, let's just um, let's just try to attack. Attack first, ask questions later. Oh, wow, okay, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, this guy, <laughs> that's kind of what I was talking about at the start of the episode. And this guy plays really weird sometimes, and, uh, you know, obviously, that card behind him is not a trap he could have used, so... Um, Kage Ninian has been promoted. A Oh, yeah, because I direct attacked with him, right? No, I didn't. But I got two of them on the field, so... Uh, but with that being said, Invisible Wire is a pretty good card. I don't think we have it yet, so... Okay, well, we got it now. I uh, guess we'll go for three in a row, I guess. So we've got plenty of infinite dismissals, so... Oh, okay. Maybe as a deck leader I should go for? Ah, no. We were close. Sorry, guys. But, uh, oh, man, we got a three on a row on the bottom row there. Man, that's a shame, man. If only there was a, a an ability that let us, you know, get three in a row, you know, from the bottom or from the top. Hmm. Well, anyway, I think I'll just show you guys Invisible Wire. And, uh, yeah, that's going to be it for this recording session. Probably just do a little deck editing and then... Uh, uh, you know, off screen, call it good. Anyway, Invisible Wire, check this out. First one we've got, uh, 20 deck cost, pretty low deck cost, but check this out. Disposable trap that triggers against a monster with 3,000 or below and destroys it. Yeah, yeah, this is, this is definitely like, this has got to be one of the best traps in the game, you know, pretty, pretty good, you know. And the AI is sometimes a little, you know, foolhardy with their movement, a little a little aggressive. You know, you, you can definitely take advantage of the AI. Now, as far as player versus player, um, my thoughts on this card, player versus player, it's honestly... Uh, well, let me just say this. Yeah, sometimes there are problem cards that you do want to destroy, for sure. But I find cards that like, like, let's say, Mesmeric Control. Cards that, you know, both stun your opponent and weaken them. Definitely a lot better versus player versus player because, you know, it it both reveals their card, weakens it, and then, you know, um, you have an opportunity to do life point damage. You know, if, with Invisible Wire, you know, yeah, you take it out, but then you can't, like, let's say something really weak triggered this, like, like, I don't know, we will summons one of his petite moths or, or or like his needle worm and you're like oh man what a waste of a trap you know what i mean in limited range you can't control when you play it now if you could control when you flip your traps like a normal Yu-Gi-Oh, i'd say this is pretty good you know you just save it for something with like you know like a uh uh quagar hercules with 2900 you know but you know it'll trigger no matter what now i guess another benefit though this doesn't trigger like if they move their magic cards in range. It won't trigger like Mesmeric Control Wheel. So I guess that's, you know, eh, there's a little bit of, yeah, yeah, you know, there's a little bit of, you know, benefits to both cards, really. So, but anyway, that's Invisible Wire. We get it now. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Glad, glad I thought of that, you know, magic card interaction. Because that's, yeah, that is kind of, yeah. It is important. Alrighty, guys. Well, that's going to do it for this recording session. Thank you guys for joining me. Uh, yeah, it's been pretty fun. And we're actually like one duel away from a reincarnation. So next recording session, I'll probably start with the turn count duel again. And then we'll just, you know, we'll soft reset a couple times for a reincarnation. And go from there. Uh, but yeah, sounds good to me. Sounds good to you. I guess. Thanks for watching. Appreciate y'all. And I'll see you all the next time. Alright. Till then, take care of yourselves and each other.